one fall with 30 minute time limit and no disqualifications. The challenger, Lee Valiant. Battle T continues. The opener tonight, Lee Valiant challenges for the Ultra Day Championship next on CWF Worldwide. Championship can't do anything about it. It is as legal as a headlock tonight. Swing oh, and a miss. Chet dunked it. Super kick by Chet Sterling. As you pointed out a second ago, no disqualification also means no count. Absolutely, anything goes. They can go to the 30 degree air out here on Springwood Avenue if they want to. I think people maybe don't realize all the history between these two men. The first big win of Chet Sterling's career was on May 17, 2013. Sterling was still a rookie. He was Trevor Lee's apprentice. And he defeated Lee Valiant, a former Mid Atlantic champion. Losing to Sterling, coupled with a heartbreaking loss later that summer in the Weaver Cup tournament, sent Lee Valiant on a downward spiral. It changed the trajectory of Valiant's career. Now he was a man on a crusade to burn CWF Minute Lane. Oh, no, Brad, 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 oh, oh, on the ramp. We saw last week on CWF Worldwide the effects of hitting that ramp. Smith Garrett never recovered after the back of his head crashed against that ramp. It is not built to support and sustain activity, not like a wrestling ring is. It's just a big plank of wood. It's built with no give whatsoever. Man, beautiful suplex. Lee Valiant like him tonight is as good as they come. Oh, yeah. Nevertheless, Valiant would go on a crusade to burn CWF down. And ultimately, that winding road led us to Ultimate Survivor in November, where Valiant crushed Sterling's neck with a pile driver, and Chet was carried out on a stretcher. Oh, Tombstone pile driver! It is legal! Tombstone pile driver is legal! Sterling has got to get out! Sterling has got to get out! He does! When was the last time we saw a Tombstone in CWF? And Valiant avoids it! Valiant finds the ropes wisely! The veteran know-how of Lee Valiant, he avoids it! Yeah. Valiant down on the 
apron. Sterling has got to be aware of that at all times. Boom! Just like that. And Lee Vine, maybe better than just about anybody except for the champion, can turn a match around in a heartbeat. Cover, cover, two, no! He is annoyingly resilient. Yes, he is. We talked about Ultimate Survivor back in November. Chet Sterling was carried out on a stretcher. Quite frankly, he has not been the same since. He lost a non-title match up at Nova Pro to Logan Easton in the road. Two hard, hard-fought wins since then against Ace Perry out of Indiana and against the technical loser, Roy Wilkins. Size break number two, got it! Again on the head and neck! Again on the head and neck! This could be all! Two! Oh! Lee has won a ton of matches with that move. It's only a matter of time, I believe, before the head and neck of Chet Sterling gives out. After you're being power driven like that, after you're being carried out, you should take time off. You have to take time off. Chet Sterling has continued wrestling a full schedule, and man, is it gonna catch up with him here tonight. No DQ is Valiant one power driver away from becoming the Ultra J champion. Oh, oh man. He's got him up. What has he got here? Alabama oh, Slam, maybe? Oh, Chet Sterling is thinking of his options. Oh, just sends him into the buckle. Yeah, just wheel barreled him into the corner. Valiant has been on a crusade to burn CWF down. Leg Lariat, what will that championship mean in his hands? Cover two, no, only two. What will the championship mean in Lee Valiant's hands? What power will he abuse if he becomes the Ultra J champion? I mean, that's kind of what sent him to where he is now, was a chase for championship glory that he never got. This, this is what he's been chasing, and I don't think it's gonna, gonna cure what's ailing him, though. That heartbreaking loss to Trevor Lee in the Weaver Cup Finals, a win would have been a guaranteed title opportunity. Look for Trevor Lee is now the Mid-Atlantic champion. We will talk about him in the weeks to come. But you're right, Lee Valiant has been on a quest ever since that fateful night in August of 2013. But this issue even predates that. The first win of Chet Sterling's ever career came against Valiant. Think about what that does to psychologically to somebody prideful like Lee Valiant. A rookie scoring the first win of his career against a former Mid-Atlantic champion. And what is Valiant going for here? Oh Valiant, Valiant, Valiant may take out the front row. This is so dangerous. This is insanely dangerous. We got civilians in the front row. Oh. Man, we, we got an extra row of fans out here. It makes it even more dangerous. It's absurdly dangerous. It's such a precarious spot. Thankfully, nobody's getting suplexed, it looks like. We'll never know. Man, this is so dangerous. A fall from that height hurts so many parts of the body. Hold on, Sterling. What's Sterling doing here? Oh, God. You're kidding? Off the second row? Crap, no way! Evelyn! Oh! Oh! Driver by Sterling! And my golly, man, it might be dead in the middle of the ring! I don't think we've ever seen an avalanche tombstone in CWF history! Cover! Two! Got it! Unbelievable! Chance Sterling had to dig in deep and pull out something we've never seen before to put away Valiant! Live by the pile driver and die by it! Good Lord, Randolph Hedrick, let's get our official word.
Check us out at CWF247.com to find out more about how you can have your event right here at the Sportatorium. Yeah. 
I wish we had more mics around here, if you know what I mean. Kefka the Quiet. Chakar Pro, also from Dojo Wars. This guy is to be taken seriously. I'm not surprised that this guy and Matty are friends. Oh, he built a wall. Yeah, the barrier, invisible wall. He built the wall and shark. Oh, man. Not since the heyday of the Florida Brothers have I seen the invisible barrier in a wrestling ring. Ooh, no wall that time, just face first. And Sharp gets a good game. Oh, oh he's got the arm. Tag into De Niro. Hey, hey, you got a lasso? What are you doing? Great. This is so stupid. It doesn't even work. Perfect. Well, it's oh, God. I think he's got sharp feet. The Nero's got sharp. They lasso sharp to the ground. And Matty D is feeling it. How did that? How is that possible? Number boy. T-Bone. Oh, man, he's fucked up tonight. T-Bone on the number boy. Nero tags into Kefka. Second rope. Raising the roof. Man, you know, mindness aside, he's a very talented young wrestler. Yeah, he is. Tag into Snooty Fox. Nothing quiet about Snooty. Not at all. Oh. The poor number boy. Yeah. They may just wear number boy out in that corner right there. Tag into the boogie woogie man. This number got drawn really late here. Yeah. You would think Sharp could afford better help. He's, we, we talked about it before. He's not too smart with his money. Handsome Mitch Connor, former Weaver Cup tournament champion, is in. Oh, the Catalina wine mixer. There it is. Drilling that arm. It's Connor calling for Donnie Dollars, and oh, Otto Schwanz, the monsters Otto Schwanz just clipped Mitch Connor. Now that is a tag. Number yes, it is. Out. Number boy is out of the ring. Otto Schwanz has declared himself legal. And Otto Schwanz, a game changer. And poor Kevka, this guy crushing the corner. Lord Schwanz is drilling everybody in the corner. He is hammering four dudes over there by himself. It may take an army to get Schwanz back to his corner. Mitch Connor is trapped over there in the corner. Connor is trapped in the Ethan Sharp corner. Everyone left the ring, but not the legal man. Keep him over here. Keep him over here. And Mitch, man, he got worked over in that corner. And Otto Schwanz is just going to pick the bones here. Otto Schwanz has been the difference maker for Ethan Sharp time after time. And man, he may crush Mitch Connor's guts out. Yeah, that's the exception to, Mitt, to Ethan Sharp being smart with his money. This was the best investment he ever made. Yes, it was. And they have compromised Mitch Connor. Into the corner. Look at this rogues gallery. Yeah, this state of this team. And Otto wiping everybody out that corner again. And again, Mitch Connor suffers the consequences over in the Ethan Sharp corner. Otto again, the difference maker. Man, and Mitch. Mitch. Not the oldest man in this matchup. Rob McBride has got him by some years, but I dare say Mitch's physical style during his career, I might would speculate that Mitch's body has more miles on it than McBride. McBride in all these years never suffered an injury, anything close to the broken neck that Mitch Connor suffered, that quite frankly, he never took enough time to heal on. And Kabuki knee, it means Kabuki two in Japanese, just drill that knee right into the neck of Mitch Connor. And unfortunately, I can tell you firsthand, Kabuki may not be the biggest man, but his strikes are so precise and so hard. Hey, discipline, that martial arts discipline. It is, he wore me out in a matter of about a minute and a half in Survivor. From what I hear, you're used to getting worn out in about a minute and a half. Especially by the Japanese. What? 
Sharp. They have compromised, handsome Mitch Connor. Like I say, he may be the man in this team that has the most wear and tear on his body of everybody on Matty D's team in the She Beast. Is it? And let, it's, it's call it like it is. Mitch is still kind of on a comeback trail. Still just now starting to work a full-time schedule. Absolutely. And man, this cyst cares not of your gender or your, your health. Your species, nothing. Cis will crush you no matter who you are. Tag into auto. Auto has been the difference maker. Yeah, Ethan Sharp may be the captain, but Otto's been the one driving the traffic. But he is the vet of this team. Yes, he is. Former Mid-Atlantic champion years and years ago. Man, he's going to break Mitch Connor's spine. He's going to rip him apart here. Yeah, it's like Tuesday in there against Mitch Connor. And the crowd trying to get Mitch up here, but he has just been destroyed in that corner. Mitch has got to fight. This auto just, Mitch may not survive this match. He has got to get to a fresh man on the far side. There's a lot of power in that Matty D corner, but he's got to get to it. Oh, Mitch got the foot up. Yes, he did. He's trying. Mitch is trying to make an opening here. Man, got a bit of a DDT. It might be enough to get to his corner. I don't know if he got all of it or not. Is he going to tag? It's Snooty Fox, the big man, the Rambunctious rookie. Man, got to get some power there, and he made the right choice. Yes, yeah, Snooty Fox, the powerhouse. Almost wonder if Connor should have tagged his normal partner. Oh, spear. Spear his guts out. Connor and Donnie Dyers have been partners for years here. He elected to go with Snooty Fox. There's Donnie. The there's nobody in the ring. <laughs> yeah, Donnie, there's nobody for him to hit. Kabuki Knee, eyes on Kabuki Knee. Oh no. Kabuki Knee and McBride have declared themselves legal. Wait, swing and a miss. Rob's got the goggles. He's got the goggles. He was ready for the orange fist. Yes, he was. He's got Kabuki. Now he's going to choke him up and Otto from behind. Oh, Otto. Look at Donnie Dollars. Look at Donnie Dollars just watching the action here. Otto Schwanz has been indestructible. There's a fight going on all over, and now Mitch Connor, who's taken so much abuse. Don't chop away at the big man, though. He's got so much heart. Trying anything on Schwanz. Everyone is blowing. There's just not enough behind Connor's shots here. Now we're seeing, now we're seeing the final tag team champion. He just booted Mitch. Donnie boots Connor in the face. That was intentional. Yes, it was. Look at the look on Donnie's face. Donnie, look at the look on Matty's face. He trusted oh, God. Oh, my God. Bobby choke slammed to Nero. Right on top of his head. Dollars choke slammed to Nero, and he's leaving. Dollars choke slammed to Nero. Elbow drop from Sharp. Are you kidding me? Damn it. Bogus. I cannot believe that Sharp's team has won this thing. And the fact that Sharp is the man that gets the pin, Matthew De Niro. I'm the best. Matt, Nick Jackson here, The Young Bucks. You are watching CWF Worldwide, but you actually should be on ProWrestlingTees.com slash Young Bucks. We've got like 54 designs. Pick one of the coolest ones. Too sweet. Too sweet me. Boom. <laughs>
is 30 minute time limit, and it is for the Pro Wrestling International Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, the challenger. The challenger? You say who has the belt, right? You say who has the belt, right? You say who Be a good little girl. And read this. Verbatim. Do we understand each other? Hey, you might as well be quiet and go ahead. This international superstar really needs no introduction. Here is the list of his accolades. He is the Carolina Championship Wrestling Association Heavyweight Champion. Three time CCWA Tag Team Champion.
until finally Converse invited Anderson to the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium for the first time at October's CWF Rumble. Anderson attacked him. Give me one of them kicks. The kicks I hear about so much. And look at Converse. Converse is not afraid of the Rottweiler. Perhaps he should be. Yeah, I'm not going to invite CW Anderson to hit me wide open in the chest. Converse has basically been out of action since October, and Anderson walked out of the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium with the Pro Wrestling International Heavyweight Championship in his clutches. Ever since that night in October, Anderson has been going around to regional promotions doing exactly what he just did, bullying ring announcers into introducing him as the rightful champion. Anderson feels that his wealth of international experience better qualifies him to be the champion in Converse. Be that as it may, you still have to beat the champion. You don't just declare yourself the champion. Right, you know what qualifies you to be the champion? You win the championship. Right, the match. Exactly. That's what qualifies you. And, uh, and Rick Converse right now, is, he's a prideful man. He's always been very prideful. This is the most fired up I've seen him in years. And he's kind of taken on a more stoic personality in the last year or so. And this is this is like the old Rick Converse. He really has, but I was about to say, Anderson has brought something out of Converse. These two battle-tested veterans, these two that have been through wars. Swing and a miss from Anderson. Anderson. Oh! Took that arm out. Yes, he did. We saw last week in the Rising Generation League Tournament Finals just how quick something like that can turn the match around. An injury to the arm like that can change the entire complexion of a match. Anderson may have just scored a home run on Converse. Right, look at his last name, Anderson. They are gold, revered for their arm work. Uh, they used to say, if your arm's hurt, check the other hand, there might be an Anderson on it. Look at this official, Josh Bear, rookie referee, being tasked with keeping order between these two veterans. Anderson, more than 20 years in the sport, Converse, uh, knocking on 20, not quite 20. Yeah, he's he gone on about 15, 16 years. He was there at the very first CWF event. Oh. See them here and say he is not gonna he's not gonna rush. He, he knows he's got 30 minutes, he's gonna take his time. Converse, a multiple time Mid-Atlantic heavyweight champion, more Mid-Atlantic title reigns than anyone, more title reigns cumulative than anyone. And it's just, oh, hold on. Ugh, the steel post comes into play. A statistic from my boy Grant Sawyer. Rick Converse has spent more cumulative minutes of his life in a CWF ring than any other living person. Everyone that has ever wrestled for CWF in Mid-Atlantic, Converse is the man with the most ring time over a career of anyone in the history of this organization. That includes the famous hour-long Iron Man match with Lee Valiant. That includes a Battle Cave main event. After Battle Cave main event, he was undefeated at this event for a number of years. There, used, there was a time where you wouldn't have a Battle Cave main event without Rick Converse. We're happy to bring this to you as our worldwide main event this week. Anderson ah. going to the arm. Anderson going to the arm. Converse is trapped. Converse is trapped. Converse has got to navigate to the ropes. It's so hard to push a man off of you when he's got your arm like that. Man, he wasn't able to get the hands clasped either, and he's having a hard time getting to the ropes. Oh, man. Converse may be trapped here. Oh, he got it. He finally got the rope. Barely got that foot on the rope. That's all that matters. This is the first time ever that C.W. Anderson has stepped in the ring at the middle of Exploratorium in a sanctioned match. We saw him again back in October, C.W. Rumble. But this is the first time in the CWF Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium to see Anderson, who was a regular in CWF Mid-Atlantic over a decade ago, a frequent tag team partner of Champagne, a frequent tag team partner of my, old, my buddy Dangerous E. Corey Edsel. But something in the last few years, Anderson, I can assume from my conversations with him that Anderson feels ostracized, that Anderson feels as though 
he, he feels quite frankly offended that he was never invited back. And it wasn't that he was never invited back, quite frankly. Oh, oh God, did you hear that thud? Quite frankly, I had no communication with C.W. Anderson until he started parading around with Rick Hunter's championship. I would see him on occasion, say hello, that was it. Anderson never asked to come back. Anderson, cover, cover. Man, he's picking apart Converse. Anderson never asked to come back. Anderson never inquired about being booked for CWF from Mid-Atlantic. He just took it upon himself after, what, a decade or more to show up one night to declare himself the champion. And quite frankly, it is this attitude that has made Anderson difficult to deal with throughout his career. That's a story for another day because the right champion, oh, slugging away. Oh, he's still coming. Oh, Rick. Converse is still coming. Man, he had a burst of adrenaline there. And now, I mean, they're both down, but man, Rick is taking so much punishment. Hey, C.W. Anderson, I mean, it doesn't help that the guy won't talk to anybody. He stands off as he gives everybody the cold shoulder. How can you book a man if he won't talk to you? Right, he, he very much just a, a victim's mentality. He assumed that he'd been ostracized. We would welcome C.W. Anderson at any time, even dating back to May. All he had to do was, was basically go through the proper channels for a return match with Converse. Come on, come on. Come on. Man, we just got a fist fight here. On the, both men on their knees and slugging it out. Oh. And honestly, if it's a fist fight, I got to get the edge to the challenge for C.W. Come on. Rick, his best game plan was to keep this a wrestling match, and unfortunately that has not occurred. He just spit in the face. Yes, he did. Oh, Rick's pissed. Sky High got him! Cover that man. Two! Only two. two. We talked about Battle Cave being Khan versus a It was two years ago on this night. He faced Eric Royal, who would be the ace of CWF Mid-Atlantic. Royal won a 30-minute classic. Converse did not step in the ring for another year until Battle Cade a year ago when Converse captured the Pro Wrestling International Heavyweight Championship from Zane Dawson. Converse said, oh, the super kick! He said, I leave CWF in your hands, Eric Royal, because I want the world to represent the world championship. Man, he's beat so many people with a super kick! Not a lot behind that kick out. Not a lot at all behind that kick out. Absolutely not, but man, CW, he landed a blow he needed. Yeah, CW, look, he's sucking some wind right now. That offense from Rick for a couple of minutes is taking it out of him. And these two have gone at a, at a pace quite frankly faster than I expected. Converse, looking for the Richter scale. No, sir. Anderson looking for the spine buster. No, Converse couldn't hold him. He could not hold him down on the sunset flip. Swinging a miss. No, Richter scale. Can he hold him? Converse is taking some punishment. Can he hold him? He can't that leg. Oh, he couldn't run with it. He had to drop him where he stood. Converse made a game day decision. Yeah, you got to get the move. Two. No! Oh, man. And that was the key. He could not get the move and execute it the way he normally does. But you can't just drop the man and not do it. He had to go for something. Man, man, Exploratorium wants another Richter scale. The move that has won him. Battle Cave main event after Battle Cave main event. He was undefeated for a number of years. In many ways, the man on whose back CWF Mid-Atlantic was carried for a decade, Rick Converse. Well, he's the back kick again. No, oh, he caught him! Muscled him up! Oh, he couldn't hold him! Anderson could not hold him for the spine buster! Huge break for Converse! A huge break for Converse! Anderson could not hold him for the spine buster! Could be the knee! Could be the knee of the Rottweiler! I think it's the pace of the match that caught up to him! Anderson is clutching the knee! Anderson is hurt! Converse has got to capitalize here! Both of these warriors have fought so hard! Man, that knee is hurting him! Oh, oh, I think he's sucking him in! He may have sucked him in! Cover! Two! Woo! Almost a new champ! Almost a new champ! I didn't know if Anderson suckered him in or if it was quick thinking, but this title fight continues.
And that's what it is, Cecil Scott. This is a title fight, a heavyweight title fight. You have been a student of so many great heavyweight fights in your life, and we are seeing one right here in the main event of CWF Worldwide. Right, it's the type of match you get. You can only get from two 15 to 20 year veterans. And, and like you said, the pace has been so incredible. Wait for that kick again. Anderson, I do not think Anderson can support his weight on that leg. I do not think Anderson can support his own weight. Converse is firing away here. Oh, shotgun. He kicked him in the ear. Yes, he did. Converse out on his feet in the cross face. In the cross face. Referee is checking on Converse. Converse is not responding. Converse is out. Converse is out. It's it. The referee took it upon himself to stop it. Rick, he wasn't answering. That's a new champion. Anderson has won the title. What? Is this for real? CW Anderson has won the Pro Wrestling International Heavyweight Championship. Converse is not responsive. Converse is not responsive to the referee. He stopped it quickly. Rick didn't respond. Peter is it many? CW Anderson. Submission. And you, PWI International Heavyweight Champion, CW Anderson. CW Anderson, by a controversial decision, has defeated Rick Converse and has become the PWI International Heavyweight Champion. Go where you are. Where are you? <laughs> 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 Oh, no! 
the flag! What an unlikely assist for Kendrick for, for Richards here! And the lifelong rivals finally make peace here at the anniversary supercard! Cecil Scott, it's gonna be one on one right now! Yes, no all-stars, no money ball! Wilkins, Richards, and Richards is here to prove he can out-wrestle the best wrestler at CWL. Richards has got a Mid-Atlantic title shot in his back pocket. However, he says before he gets to that point, he must prove himself against the very best. He must prove himself against the man that Trevor Lee defeated to become the Mid-Atlantic champion and kick off this historic run Cecil Scott, I'm going to ask you on the onset of this matchup, can the technical master out-wrestle Richards? Can he tie him in knots? Can he take Richards enough out of his game that Richards can never get in his element? Does Richards need the fight? Can he wrestle Wilkins? You've been in the ring with both these guys. Give me your tail of the tape here. Is it going to be the technical prowess of Wilkins? Is it going to be the fighting of Richards? Or can Richards hang with Wilkins if it comes to that? Well, Richards came into this saying he wanted to wrestle Roy Wilkins. He wanted to try to out-wrestle the technical wizard. To be frank, I don't think he can. That's not to say he can't win this match, but he has to He has to be Nick Richards. I'm not saying the lost cause has to come out. He does have to turn this into a death match. But he has to stick with what he's good at and not try to get out of his own element. Wilkins, if you make a mistake, if you try to do something you're not comfortable with, we know he'll pick you apart. Right. That could be the downfall of Richards. I admire the Richards who for so long in his career was known as such a formless brawler. Oftentimes Richards did not even know the game plan ahead of time. He would literally just throw it out there and see what could stick. Richards will have to be sharp if he plans to out wrestle Maybe the best wrestler we've ever seen. Would you, would you apply that accolade to Wilkins? Yeah, as far as technique and technical acumen, I mean, the only person that comes close is Trevor Lee. And I would say they're almost equals, but Wilkins is really on another plane. And I, I've compared him in the past to the great lightweight boxer Juan Manuel Marquez in the sense that Wilkins better than anybody can sit back in a match and watch where the match is going and game plan on the fly and change his offense and change what he does. And if he knows that Richards is going to try to do this, if he's going to try to technical wrestle, he's already got a game plan and will probably sit back and formulate another one as we go. Thus far, it has been straight wrestling. It has not been the brawling style of Richards. I wonder if Wilkins can stretch out this matchup if we will see more and more of that brawling style presence. And if you're Richards, that's, that's a key. I mean, no, he may not be about wrestling, but he still has to keep his composure. We've seen recently where if he gets pushed, that lost cause kind of comes back out. And I don't think that's going to behoove him at all in this case. Because I kind of feel like the coach's game plan for that. And that's another, another we can't ignore the fact that the coach is out there either. And that's two brilliant wrestling minds in that corner that Richards has really got to watch out for. You're exactly right. No, I'm not talking about Jerry Carey's brilliant wrestling. <laughs> no, we're not talking about that at all. You see those pants? Yeah. Oh, my God. Big, big test for Richards here, the winner of the 2016 John Weaver Cup. He said so even that night, Richards said, I don't know if I'm somebody that Johnny Weaver would be proud of to hold that trophy, but I got here, and I'm going to be. I want to be a man that Johnny Weaver would be proud to have my name on his trophy. Yeah, and there's a uh, kind of a target point among wrestling circles these days, and there's no one right way to do it. And some people take that as meaning different things, but to me that means you get in that ring and do whatever's effective, whatever works. Richards with a nice counter. 
Yeah, really good thinking. Wilkins he saw a smile on Wilkins' face. He, it seems like he just he feels like he's got Richards right where he wants it. Well, that, I, I kind of feel like that confidence may, that overconfidence may kind of undo Wilkins. So. And again, drops him with the drop toe hold, and he is just baiting Richards in. And frankly, out wrestling. But you're not surprised. We, we talked about that moments ago. If the wrestling was the wise move on Richard's part, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer for that, quite frankly. And I, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, I, I guess in the back of my mind, I'm just curious to see how long Richard's tries to stay with it. Will he? Will he stay composed? Will he be patient? Patience has never been Richard's virtue. Right. Oh, nice hard shoulder tackle by Wilkins. And you know, in the back of his mind, he knows he beats the Weaver Cup champion. He's right back in line for a championship match. Well, Jerry Carey did not get the chance to introduce him as such, but Wilkins does hold the golden ticket. That means any match of his choice. Richards going to the air. Richards, Whoa. Richards oh wrestling. Great. Richards Dude. wrestling Dude. only got two, though. Great Lucha inspired move there, which is the last thing I would say, I thought I'd say about Nick Richards. He's studied Mexico a lot in his life, but that's not what I had in Coach calling a timeout, which, as we know, not valid. Yeah, but it's stalemate here. And Wilkins, as I expected, the moment Richards maybe got a little momentum, I, I knew he would kind of roll out and break the momentum here. Taking his time, getting some water. The referee has got the count on him. Interesting to see that, you know, Wilkins surely is confident in his abilities, but still kind of playing defense against Richards here. Oh, man, I suck him in. Yeah, he's almost like in a zone defense here where he's got a lot of leeway and a lot of uh, options that he can go with, but he's still kind of on the defensive to see where the offense is going. And he keeps finding his opening. So Richards, he throws the first real strike in the match with that elbow. Oh, slapped him right in the face. And now this thing's turning into a fist fight, which, contrary to what he said, this is what Richards wants. Right, right. Well, I don't know, man. Maybe he psyched himself out of wanting it, quite frankly. I don't know. Man, this, this is turning into a striking match. And this is, Richards will absolutely have an advantage in this case. Going for the double arm in the corner. Wilkins holding on. Great defensive wrestling. Again, Wilkins read the situation. He saw what was coming. Wilkins, I mean, as great a wrestler as he is, to underrate him when it comes to strikes and roughing things up. You don't become a, you're not a pupil of the coach if you can't kind of manipulate and rough people up. Coach Gemini is always trying to intimidate the official. Wilkins. Set up to Richards. Goes behind. Duck under that clothesline. And another beautiful defensive move by Wilkins, the technical wizard. Man, he is so good. Wilkins is so good. Oh! And Wilkins takes the fight to Richards. And that was honestly the first really big high impact move of this match, and it goes to Wilkins. Wilkins is perpetually with that cocky look on his face throughout this match. He feels like he's in the best shape he's ever been in, even better shape than he was when he wrestled for nearly two hours with Trevor Lee. He felt like that, I've heard the coach say, they felt like that may have been his undoing. Maybe his cardio wasn't where it should have been to wrestle that long. And there's been a focus on building back his cardio and losing weight. Possibly in preparation of a return match with Trevor Lee. Like we said, the holder of the golden ticket, you are entitled to any match of your choosing. Any stipulations, any opponents. Wilkins, the first man ever to hold the golden ticket twice. The first time Wilkins held the golden ticket, it brought him the Mid-Atlantic Championship, and it ended the historic title reign of oh, Eric Roy. Richards barely beat the count. Yeah, he's used that golden ticket to great effectiveness, and 
Cage talking about how he could make any match he wants. We kind of got a precedent set tonight. If Will, if Lee gets past Brad Attitude, what if Wilkins says, hey, you've got a 10 minute time limit? It's a fair point. That golden ticket could come into play before we go off the air tonight. Oh, Richards tried to throw the leg up. It did not work. And I'll ask you the question. If Wilkins keeps game planning and keep reading Richard's offense, does Richard have any chance even if he wrestles his match? I don't know. You know, we call him the technical master, the technical wizard. Oh! One of the best in the game is Roy Wilkins. And just to be quite frank, he is really on Nick Richard so far in this match. Yes, he has. Can Richards hang in there with a former two-time Mid-Atlantic heavyweight champion? Can Richards... Oh, Richards may have an injured ankle now. We have seen throughout the course of Battle Can on the previous two episodes of CWF Worldwide how much an injury, key moment to change the matchup. Cecil Scott, Richards is literally and figuratively on the ropes here. We got 10 minutes past here. We had a, a situation last week where Rick, where Rick Carver's lost a match and didn't even realize it. And we could have a similar stoppage. Correct. Look for updates on Rick Converse in the weeks to come here on CWF Worldwide. Well, we got five, about five more minutes to work here. And Wilkins is just really right in this clock. And we might be ready to put it away with the figure four leg lock. One of the favorite holds of Coach Gemini. Yes, he might. Oh, and look at Coach giving him extra leverage. Oh, Richards is trapped here. Man, he's trapped and there's a lot of unfair advantage on the outside. Yeah, fans really getting on the case of the coach. He's reaching for the ropes, but he can't quite. Richards, I, I don't know if he'll ever give up, but he may pass out here. Referee Kevin Pierce is right there. It will not be a bad stoppage in this one. Referee Kevin Pierce is right there. Richards is itching for the ropes. Richards has got to make the ropes here. But he's watching the shoulders and does not see the interference from Coach Jim and I and Jerry Carey. Jerry, he looks like an out of work magician over there. Get this. Get this. Oh, and again, the interference. Coach has got his foot on the rope and using the towel here. They finally caught him. That could justify an ejection. Fans are calling for the coach's ejection. It is referee's discretion if that happens or not. Yeah, he needs to get him out of here. Oh, but Richards in the ring. Richards has been trapped in his hole for a long, long time. Ooh. That was close. It's easy to get caught napping in that figure four. Yes, it is. Richards was trapped in that hole for a long, long time. And Nick, unless he hits something big really quick, this thing is going down the drain for him in a hurry. He has been unable to mount any offense in, in over 10 minutes now. You got it, Roy. You got it, Roy. You got it. Whoa, is he going to suplex him to the floor? Coach is in the ring. Pierce has got to get the coach out of the ring. Watch me, Are you serious? Are you ribbing me right now? Every time Pierce has got to pay better attention to what's going on here. Richards is fighting them both. He fought them both off. And I think Jerry Carey might be done. Thank God. Wait, Richards, is Richards gonna take a big chance here? Oh no. Kid, you can't do this. Oh my God. He soared off the apron, but that's not your opponent. Your opponent is up behind you. Your opponent is up behind you. And that was the mistake. That was the mistake he couldn't afford to make. He blocked the post. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's got him double underhooked. Want to fly into the post, perhaps? Mm, he ate the post. That may do enough damage for Richards to get something going in the last minute and a half here. 90 seconds remain. Coach is hiding behind the official. And again, he's taking his eye off of his opponent. Oh, he's not coming. Oh. And down goes the coach. Wilkins caught the coach. Cutter. But Wilkins may have ran out the clock on Richard. 
works. Oh man, another brilliant defensive move by Wilkins. Oh, golf swing. Oh, he ate that one. Both men are down. Richards may have to settle for going the distance with a former Mid-Atlantic champion. Shining Wizard got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Richards is poised. Shining Wizard got absolutely nothing. Cutter, no, no. Wilkins did not let him have the cutter. Richards, Weaver roll, Weaver roll, perhaps. Shoulders are down. The bridge got is down. Got him with a wrestling hole. With seconds to spare, Nick Richards wins it with a wrestling hold. With a wrestling hold, Nick Richards just out-wrestled the two-time Mid-Atlantic champion, Randolph Hedrick. Talk about it. 14 minutes, 32 seconds. We win by pinfall, Nick Richards! Monumental win on a monumental night is the goofy kid from Atlantic City, New Jersey. The kid that moved to the Mid-Atlantic as a teenager is that the next Mid-Atlantic heavyweight champion.